In this video, I wanted to share with you a bunch of tips and tricks that I learned myself today to make this design right here, this vintage label design. I'm gonna use Mid Journey, uh, Photo P, Vectorizer AI, and Affinity Designer, put it all together, and I'll show you some tips and tricks for all of those in this video. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Juno with Detour Shirts. In this video, I wanted to share with you something that I just figured out today, and I don't think anybody's doing it, at least I haven't seen it on YouTube yet. And I'm gonna use Mid Journey AI. You can use any AI, I think, with this prompt. I'm gonna show you the prompt that I'm using, as well as how I transition it from Mid Journey to Photo P to Vectorizer AI, and then to Affinity Designer to finish it all up and give it a, just a little bit more extra stuff that it needs to make it stand out. So we're gonna do a vintage uh, label design, uh, just like you've seen before. But in this video, I'm gonna use AI to make the label design. And then I'm gonna use Affinity Designer to put the words in because AI is not really good at putting the words. We're gonna do the words just with some of the fonts that I have. You can use any fonts that you want. So first things first, let's go to Mid Journey and I'll show you the prompt that I use to get this label. Okay, step one is to get the whiskey label or the vintage label, I'm gonna use a whiskey label. You're gonna see right here, it says vintage whiskey label design in white on a black background. That's all I did. And you can see all of them here. Any one of these would be great. I picked this one right here cause I really wanted it white and you could change the color. Like I could go in here and change this color. Um, but I like this one. I think it uh, is great for where I wanna put the words, right? And so that's what I'm looking for. I upscaled it right here. And then I did a bunch of other ones so you can take a look at these. It doesn't have to have a whiskey thing. The main thing is you want a space for the words and we're gonna remove these words in photo P. This one would be cool too. I think I upscaled that one as well. Yeah, I did. So this one would be cool as well. I'm just gonna would, would remove all of that in here and then type in there with Affinity Designer. Here's some other ones that I did that I didn't like as much. I thought I could go simple vector. And this one's kind of cool. I didn't upscale that one, but here's my prompt. Simple vector line art, white lines, fancy vintage whiskey label in white on a black background. So I did that twice and came up with that. So you can use any of these prompts that I put right here or a variety of them and uh, have fun. So go do that first, that's step one. So the next step is Take that label and go into photo P. Okay, step number two is to remove the text that we don't want on the label. So what we're gonna do is get that PNG that we downloaded. Uh, it's gonna be 1024 by 1024. It's too small, but we're gonna remove the text first. So let's grab that. We downloaded this from Mid Journey, right? And then throw it in here. So you can see this text is unreadable. So I'm gonna cover over it. And you can see it's already black right here. I'm gonna use this brush right there. And you can see how big the brush is when you go over it. You can see, like I could make it bigger if I want. It says 15 right now. I could make it 20, 25. You can see it's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm just gonna brush over it. You can see like that. So I don't want any of this right here. In fact, I'm gonna take this, whoops. Yeah, I'm gonna just take all of this out. Let's take all of this out. This words here. I'm gonna leave that in. I'm gonna take out this right here. Boom, so easy, right? And this word's here. In fact, I'm gonna cut it to right there. Very easy. And then I'm gonna do that. And then I don't want these stars either. So I'm gonna come in here, get in. And you can zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And you can make this brush bigger if you wanna do it faster. So let's say I have 32, right? I can make it 80 and you can see the brush is super big now. And I can just come in here just a lot faster with it. I'll scroll up here. And I'm gonna need a smaller brush to get these stars here. So I'm gonna come in and go back down to 30, 27, that's fine. You can see right there. Now there's words right here too. So one thing I can do, and here's a tip, is I can use the 
eyedrop tool and select this color so now you can see the brush is this color instead of the dark background and so when I do my brush this time I go back to my brush I'm just filling it over with that color okay and it's okay that it's not the exact color as long as it's pretty close you can see it's not the exact color here but we're gonna fix that in vectorizer AI so once we got it the way we want it like this we're gonna export this as a PNG so let's come in here file export as PNG uh, we can call it whatever but call it something that you can remember so uh, I'm gonna say letters removed or words removed that's shorter good and then hit save so we're gonna take this one with the words removed and we're gonna vectorize this in vectorizer AI so step three is here in Vectorizer AI. We're going to vectorize this. We're going to change it from a PNG to a SVG, but I'm going to show you one tip that I learned today in here that I didn't know before. So let's take that PNG. We're going to drag it in here, which is great. And it's going to do the same thing that we've done before a uh, bunch of times in my other videos. It's just going to load it. But here's the difference. Instead of having 10, 20 different colors, I didn't know that you can come in here, click on this and only pick two colors, right? So I'm gonna pick two and then hit okay. So now it's just gonna do it again, but only with two colors instead of you saw it had like 20 colors, right? So now this is gonna make it a lot easier to just do two colors in Affinity Design. Okay, now it's great. I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna download it words removed. So now it's going to be words removed SVG. We're going to take that SVG, bring it into Affinity Designer and finish this up. All right, step four is to bring it into Affinity Designer. So we're here in Affinity Designer. I'm going to go file, open, and then find that uh, download that I got the words removed SVG, right? Open it up. And we're going to remove the colors first. So you can see right here, this black is easy to remove boom but there's a bunch of black ones in here so this is what I'm gonna do here's a tip for affinity designer I've never shared before and that is remove something with the same color so check this out you can see this and that and all of these are the same color and you don't have to like meticulously click on each one you can go here to select same fill color and that cool it selected all of them and I can just hit backspace. Boom. Now you'll notice there's another color here. Even though I said there's only two color or asked for just two colors, there's another color here and that's this outline color. So I'm going to click right here and you can see that there's that outline color. So you can do the same thing for a stroke. So I'm going to do select same stroke color, right? And I'm going to hit delete backspace. Boom. So now I only have the one color. Isn't that cool? Oh, there, it missed one right here. Let's see. That's fine. We're going to take care of that guy. Yeah. So now it's just the one color. Really cool, right? So I'm going to uh, make this artboard the right size. I'm going to go here, insert artboard. And you can see, I think it's 1024 by 1024 because that's what... Uh, mid journey does so I'm going to do 4500 by 5400 and enter and then we're going to zoom out and we're going to uh, color the background first so I can see what I'm doing we're going to make it black and it can be any color it's going to work with any color because it's just one color I'll show you in a little bit let's make this bigger grab the corner Make sure it's about centered, right? We're kind of eyeballing that side and that side and bring it down right there. Cool. So it fills the space. That tall rectangle is what we want. And we can look at this with any color. So let's say gray. It looks great with gray, blue, even red because it's just one color. So if we had the one color like that, that looks great, right? Okay, so now we gotta put in some text. So let's just zoom in here. I'm gonna do like those vintage 1960, 1973, whatever on here. So let's do a text here. I'm just gonna type in there and we're gonna do 
uh, let's just do the year first. Let's do 1963, since these people are turning, what, 60? Um, and I'm going to use, let's see, this font right here, Brawls, Typeface, Slab, oh, Burton Slab, yeah, let's do that. Burton Slab, oh, I had to highlight it. Burton Slab, yeah, that looks cool, right? And it looks very vintage, it matches that. You can look for your own vintage stuff. I'm gonna make it the same color. So there we go, 1963. I'm gonna do like made in 1963. So I'm gonna hold down option, bring this up here and just type in uh, made. You can see it has that nice uh, thing right there, that swoosh. Let's do made. Uh, let's do one line, one line. Made in, yeah, that's good. I'm gonna just put it like that. And is that the right color? I don't know. Let's make sure we got the same. Yeah, I think I grabbed the wrong color. Okay, there we go. Made in 1963, great. Uh, let's see, um, I'm gonna put something here, like, let's do like aged perfectly. Perfect, oh, this has to be, let's do this in red for now. We're gonna knock it out. Um, but it's gonna perfectly, it's gonna look like it's knocked out for a second here and then I'll show you how to knock it out. Um, okay, uh, oh, we want this, this color. Uh, let's use another font. Let's like mix up some fonts here. Um, going to my favorites, I have, ooh, this one looks cool. Aged, yeah. Uh, that one is Ballet Harmony. I think that's a free one from the font, so you can go check it out right there. I'm gonna fill some more space here. You maybe use a different font. Um, I don't know, limited edition. I need something condensed though, because it's, uh, let's see, it's a small, tall space. So I really like this one, the rough, the foreign rough one, Forgen rough one, uh, limited. I'll make it smaller. Limited edition. And you can put whatever, you want. we're just brainstorming here. Uh, I'm gonna copy, hold down option, shift, drag, copied that. Uh, maybe one of a kind. You know, like how they, they all say can, stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, we need something down here. Um, original parts or something. Let's do that. You see how it's shaping up to, to look like you, you're filling the space with words and then when we run out of words and there's just little space, we're gonna fill it in with something else. So uh, original parts, okay. Center that. Okay, so now we still have space here, space here, space here. So I'm gonna show you some tricks on that. So uh, you see how there's this oval here? So I'm gonna just use an oval or kind of make pretend that there's an oval by just doing a line. So I'm gonna use the pen tool, come here and then go here and then just kind of draw, drag that line here like this, right? So it looks like it's part of that oval. I'm gonna use that same color, make it a stroke a little bigger, as you can see, yeah. Now, that may not look exactly like it. One thing you can do is uh, take your white arrow tool, click in here to give you a point and just try and eyeball it. So from here to here should be the same as from here to here, right? That and that, and then this will just move. Yeah, yeah, that could work. It's just it's just kind of eyeballing it and make it make sure that it's curving and having one in the middle can really help it look like a curve, right? And take this one down and make sure the this other one is like your handles, this middle one has your handles. All right, so let's do, we can do the same on the other side by flipping it. So I'm gonna hold down option, click, uh, shift, drag, and then I'm gonna flip it right here. It says flip horizontal, boom. And then just make sure it's about the same, you know, right here, that distance should be that distance right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Cause this whole thing is just one big art piece, right? So another thing we can do is put shapes in here. So Affinity Designer has a bunch of shapes. 
I got this circle right here. I'm just gonna hold down shift, make sure it's a nice circle. I'm gonna fill it with that color, not red. So I'm take that stroke out and you know, just put it right here and then make uh, progressively smaller circles. So I'm gonna make this one, hold down shift and make this one a little smaller and then option shift drag, maybe make this one a little smaller like that, right? And just space them out. And you wanna do the same for the other side. And one nice trick here is to select all three, uh, do option shift drag, flip all three like this and put that big circle back on that big circle. And now you got it all together. Isn't that cool? We're gonna do the same with uh, stars here and I'll put some stars here and I think that will be enough. I mean, we could put more stars and more stuff, but uh, let's just do a star here. I'm holding down shift to make the star. And then we're gonna see, we have to make sure that it fits here. I kind of like my star, I'm gonna zoom in here. I kind of like my star just a little fatter. I'm gonna do this inner radius in this, like have it come out like that. I, I like that kind of star better. And let's just make sure it fits. Good, I think that's good. Okay, so we're gonna kind of rotate this star and bring it around here. So let's do here and kind of turn it to match this. You see how it's level with that? Um, well, that's not gonna fit. So let's put that here and turn it. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll come out here and turn it. See how it's level like that? And then maybe one last one here, turn it. Good, so that's, I mean, that's kind of, kind of right. Maybe this one should be more there and then you're gonna to have to play around with the bottom here again. Good, that, that spacing, we want the spacing in between the stars to be up around the same. And again, you can eyeball this. So we're gonna do the same thing. Clip off four, flip it, match it, and take away this one. All right, and then lastly, Let's go take this star, option shift drag. We're gonna just put it down here and do the same thing. And then come over here, do the same thing. Boom, done. Look at that, really cool, right? So there we go. It can work great on a black t-shirt. Uh, oh, let's hold this. Uh, I did the stroke. Black t-shirt would be nice. Oh, we forgot, this needs to be knocked out. So here's how you do it. Um, let's click this right here and then click that and group those two together. We're gonna go back into layers and find it. Where's the group? Maybe, oh, there we go, there's the group, okay. So that perfectly, instead of normal, let's do an erase. And there you go, it's erased. So now when you change the color of the background or the t-shirt, um, it's already erased. Isn't that cool? All right, so to export this, you're gonna wanna take uh, the background away. So remove that background. It's just that one color now, which is really cool. And you can color it if you want, uh, or you can make it white instead of this like off-white. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna export this, so I'm gonna go File, Export. Uh, we're gonna export this as a PNG and do Selection Only, PNG, and it's gonna be a transparent PNG and then you can put this on T-shirts or wear, posters or whatever you want. It's mainly for T-shirts is what we're designing this for and, and there you go. And this will work great on Amazon Merch On Demand, Redbubble, TeePublic, any of those. So there you go, that's how easy it is to do it. You can see all the four steps. The most important step uh, really is doing all the text and finding what text you need on there. And again, this was a scaling design. So if you wanna do 1963, 1964, 1965, 1970, 1983, and so on, you can get a ton of designs just from this one design by scaling those things and having uh, text that you can scale. So have fun with this. Uh, I think this can be really powerful and get you some really nice designs 
Um, you can do lots of different vintage labels or other kinds of labels. It doesn't have to be a whiskey label. If you want to see another video that I did with AI and Affinity Designer, I'll put it right here as my dinosaur one. I think uh, that kawaii style is also really good. So have fun with this. Thanks again for watching. And as always, guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.